including three of the Tigers right now, leading the nation in a couple of stat categories. Jaden Daniels leading the way, averaging 401 yards of offense per game every Saturday. And I was reminded in watching Daniels play this weekend about the Auburn LSU game last season. He threw for 82 yards Ooh. against Auburn last year on the Plains. I mean, it was a good game. Game count down to the end. Harold Perkins interception. LSU is able to get out of there with a win. Greg Brooks with the big play that night. Face full of turf after he makes the game ceiling interception. But remember, if you can, go back to 2022 and recall leaving the Plains and talking about the inability of the offense to make any plays in the air. You've got wide receivers on the field like Malik Neighbors, Kayshawn Booty, Brian Thomas, Mason Taylor. A lot of the same weapons that are setting records, records today are on the field then. The issue last year in this game is that the quarterback was not fully developed, not fully confident. As we talked about yesterday, Lil Jay and I were talking this morning Jaden Daniels is the best quarterback in the country. Stacked up against all of them. Shador Sanders, Caleb Williams, Drake May. And I'm going by the numbers. I'm usually not a numbers guy. I'm an eyeballs guy. Turn on the film, what pops? Well, he's not the statistical leader. I don't care. When I watch Texas A&M play, Le'Veon Moss is their best back. Is he their statistical leader? No. Okay, give him the ball more. When you look at the stats that Jaden Daniel, Jane Daniels is 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 putting down, he's the best quarterback in the country by the numbers. And then you turn on the game and your eyeballs tell you the same yeah, thing. He really is the best quarterback in the country. And Daniels right now leading the nation. With 401 yards per game in offense, he leads the conference and sits number two in the country in passing touchdowns and touchdowns that he's responsible for. Malik Neighbors leads the country in receiving yards with 860. Brian Thomas is tied for the nation lead in touchdown receptions with nine. The two receivers rank as the top SEC duo in the country. For his performance last weekend, Charles Turner III starting center for LSU, named the Outland Trophy National Player of the Week. Offensive line for LSU was a part of the fuel that powered 563 yards of total offense. Turner has now been on the Outland Trophy watch list going forward for being named the Outland Trophy Player of the Week from a national standpoint. Five straight weeks, LSU has averaged over 500 yards of total offense. Never in the history of the school, in the history of the program, has that happened. Additionally, LSU's offensive line was named a midseason honor roll member for the Joe Moore Award, which goes to the most outstanding offensive line unit in college football. Right now, the O-line for LSU ranks fifth nationally and first in the SEC with yards before contact. LSU won this award back in 2019. Right now, this LSU football team is producing and the confidence is growing. If you watched SEC Inside on the SEC Network or you were able to check out just some of the clips of what's coming out of the football program, I think gold drops today, the last week version. Usually drops Tuesday nights. So you can go back and check out last week, but you can feel. We were watching SEC Inside this morning before the show got on on the network and Man, the the confidence of this LSU football team over the last couple of weeks has really been put on steroids. I mean, you can see it just... It's palpable. Very lightning-esque happening and and, and starting to feel that they they, they are finding their way and and gaining their identity. uh, identity. So uh, really looking forward to talking to Jacques coming up here uh, from, uh, from Nine Sports, get some of his observations of LSU... Right now, kind of get the feel of it. You know, you're, you're starting to see at the midway mark and a little past the midway mark of, of the season where people are starting and thinking, projecting the, the, the postgame. 
picture and scenario and what's it going to look like, right? And when the SEC comes up, LSU is is not far away from a, a team that that people are looking at, but they're also this this dark horse in the sense of you just you, you may not want to play them, you may not want to run into them at this point is the sentiment of LSU. Every Saturday you got to pack it up. Every Saturday you got to bring it. You can't you know take any days off. But right now LSU looks like one of those teams that scary from a, a, a scenario. Um, that if you run into them, they they are a huge issue right now, especially offensively, right? I don't think that anybody fears LSU defensively when you look at them just from afar. But if you're watching closely, the last two weeks has been something to grow on for them. Are they putting together a defense that is going to scare anybody? Probably not. Probably not. Even the offenses that they're facing down the stretch. I mean, it's not Florida State. It, it, it's not some of these high-power offenses that that they run into Oregon, in, in the first five games of the season. Ole Miss. Right. Even Mississippi State to a degree with a with a with a senior quarterback, a guy that, you know, I mean, ha, has played a lot of uh, of snaps. You look down the line of guys that are still left on the schedule to play, and while there's there's solid competition, there's nobody that strikes fear in you. Right? I mean, I watched Jalen Milrow in that offense play. <laughs> that is not the offense that can keep up with what LSU is rolling out there every Saturday. Slender man. I mean, I'm watching Max Johnson lead this Petrino Fisher attack where they're obviously arguing over who's You take it. No, you take it. No, I want it. I going want to call, be the, the play calling dynamic. And I see thirteen points in Knoxville. Good luck. Who does it? Who does it look like calling the plays? Jimbo. Jimbo. It, it it looks like it looks like they 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 found some things early on with Max Johnson that was working for him that they've just gotten away from. And to me, that is Jimbo. I think that Bobby. I, look, I think that they're both bright offensive minds. That I mean, you know, I mean, what are we talking about? I mean, Jimbo's been it for thirty five years. I mean, you know, he's not going to forget football. He has his principles, that's for sure. But he's definitely stuck in his ways. And Petrino, to me, has always been more of a innovator, innovator. more of a guy that would uh, adapt, more of a guy that just brilliant, really, offensively. You know, I mean, when you think of Bobby Petrino, I think offensive mind. Jimbo's still running the toss die, too. Oh, Jimbo is a uh, – he loves him some pro-style football. <laughs> and it's just – and what's just so funny is because whenever he was at LSU, it felt like he was innovative. That's right. He was on uh, the one that was thrown at 30, 35 times a game. And you're like, okay. And then whenever it left – ahead of his time. Yeah, then he got squeezed by less, and now he's the less doing the squeezing, which is bizarre. It is weird. It it's is just weird. I guess it gets harder the older you get to for as, keep for as up. much as Les Miles and Jimbo Fisher butted heads. He's turning into the man he and hated. Really could not stand one another at the end. <laughs> I mean, I hate this th- man. There is, I hate there you is, too. I'm in the mirror. I mean, I, I've I've talked to players. I've talked to coaches. I've talked to people that were on the sideline of that Auburn 2006 game, and it was like, "F you, no f you." I quit over the headset. I mean, when you've got Jamarcus Russell, Dwayne Bow, Craig Davis, all these guys, and you 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 score three points, and then finally <laughs> at the end of the game, Miles is like, "Jimbo, you take it," and Craig Davis gets knocked out of bounds at the two yard line on a seven play drive. They threw it seven times. After that, it was I mean, like the the relationship was irreparable. I mean, like it was over. And now. When you watch Jimbo's team play, it resembles Les Miles' LSU Oof. so much that it is painful. I mean, it, it, it's easy, I think, to point and laugh at Texas A&M. I mean, the yell leaders, the videos, all that Ooh. stuff that they put out. I mean, it's That's just, bad. The jokes write themselves. Do you see him swimming in the, uh, but in the, the fountain? <laughs> the Jimbo stuff. Is they get just, thrown in there. At the that's yell the part. most uh-huh. painful part for them. Like when I talk to Lucci and I talk, I'm like, man, I am just, I, I, I'm so sorry about what you. I mean, I, I know Texas what it's A&M. like. It could have been LSU. It could have been. Jeez. Should have been twice. Was. Yes, twice. I mean, twice it almost was LSU. They, they hired the man during the game, and then didn't. And then didn't. Joe Oliva. Jeez. 
Coach O probably wanted to fight Joe Oliva. Yeah, or, or, or hug job. him. <laughs> but you're seeing, I mean, somebody just said in the chat, I mean, looking ahead to LSU's opponents, Jalen Milrow is kind of playing how a little bit of had some Jane Daniels in him from last year, 10 of 21 against Arkansas, where it's just, oh. Well, and, and get me out of here. And and right. It, I mean, it, obviously. It's very one-dimensional. Right. Obviously, you know I, mean? I mean, he had 11 carries for negative 19 yards, but that's what the sacks involved. But, I mean, 10 of 21. I mean, he had his best game against A&M when they needed him the most, 21 of 33. But when you look ahead to LSU, who they have to play, you're at you're, – it's not it's not hyperbole to say LSU is the best offense in the country and Jane Daniels might be the best quarterback in the country. That plays anywhere you go. And when you look at the defense, you finally got a little bit of complimentary football where, okay, you could say it's against Auburn, but still, you don't think Auburn was looking at LSU and go, that's a get-right game for our offense. Because they were, we, we talked about it, it was 121 versus 121. And LSU's defense finally looked like it showed a little bit of signs of life to hold them under 20 points, you get them off the field on third down, you kind of feel like the pieces are falling in place on the defensive side that everybody knows their role. So things are coming together at the right time. Like you said, you're watching the LSU like insider for the Auburn game, and you're starting to see a little bit of everybody fist bumping everybody. It felt like it was, like Stu said, a little bit offense versus defense in the locker room. Or it's like somebody pick each other oh, up. Sure. And now it's turned into, okay, we're all kind of playing our best football at the same time. Bet MGM um, has put out their odds for Heisman Trophy winners. Right now, Michael Penix Jr. is the leader in the clubhouse at minus 145. J.J. McCarthy and Dylan Gabriel are in second at plus 1,000. Jordan Travis and Jaden Daniels are at plus 1,300, while Drake May is at plus 1,400. I, look, the JJ McCarthy thing kills me. Unreal. You, have I you mean, seen it? Like, first of all, have you seen his stats? He throws the ball maybe twenty times a game. They they lean on the run game. They run it. They run the ball forty times a game, and he's throwing it twenty times a game. And it, like his his completion percentage is obviously going to be high, and the competition that they're playing isn't very good. I mean, I, I just think that it, it's a very lazy field right now. When you look mm-hmm. at it, it's very easy to look at the name brands and look at the best players on the best teams and just put them in the discussion. Because I mean, I, I don't know. I've never fought what this else fight before. Jaden Daniels could do to really get his his name to be relevant. And I think all it's going to take is that Alabama game. Oh yeah, this is coming. Don't really? you worry. Like I mean, it's not as if it's not going to work itself out. Right, like I mean, it's going to have a moment. There's going to be the moment. There's going to be the opportunity. There's going to be the stage that he has a chance to to really elevate himself into the top of this discussion. Alabama's the best defense left on the schedule that he's going to play. Biggest moment. It's going to be at night on national television. It's going to be one of this LSU Alabama matchups that you know, I mean the last fifteen years has delivered. You don't think they're going to get the CBS two thirty kickoff treatment? I think they're going to get CBS seventh. There's a double header that day, right? Uh, I mean, that's they the, get to do that. Yeah, that's, that's a, the Saturday that CBS is reserved the the the, the double header. Uh, um, I mean, when we were leaving Tiger Stadium last year, I told I told the crew that I was with. This game's going back to prime time next year on CBS. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they can't they can't have that data from last year. I mean, that was arguably the game of the year last season. I think it was. Or the Tennessee Bama game. Yeah. Yeah, but guess who was involved in both? Right. And you have the I guess the the storyline of and I don't want to overlook Army, but I feel like everybody understands what Army is and you have we'll have 2 weeks to build the or yeah, we'll have 2 weeks to build this Alabama game up. But I do think, I don't know if the time has been announced yet, but it will be in the future. I would imagine that this will be your doubleheader. This will be a 6.15, 6 o'clock kick where... Yeah, you'll learn the time of this game on Monday. Yeah, and you'll LSU, um, I forgot who, there's another good game that the SEC has, so it lines up for a good CBS, 2.30, Is it Georgia? back-to-back. To this Florida? Florida? I'm not sure. I think that might be actually next weekend on LSU's bye weekend. Mm-hmm. I think because uh, Georgia's on by this weekend, and they come off and play that game. Yeah, that's, that's Georgia, Florida. Next Georgia, weekend? Florida is next weekend, and then they play Missouri November fourth. You have LSU, Alabama, TBD, Texas A and M will miss. 
Texas A and M. Auburn Vandy. There's another good one out there that I, I, they I might, looked it up yesterday. They might do uh, uh, Texas A and M. Texas A and M Ole Miss. Miss. Yeah. I mean, that's you know I that's mean, gonna like, be a good game. Jimbo and Lane hate each other. Oh God! Like I mean, they're out loud in the in the media hating one another. I mean, Arkansas, they, Florida, meh. Kentucky, Mississippi State, meh, meh. No, no. I think it's I think it's Texas A and M and I think it's Texas A and M Ole Miss. Yeah, put that at two thirty. That's fine. At Ole Miss, and then you have, I mean, LSU Alabama. Is that that makes even a better case for that to be the night game? Yeah. No, I, look, man. I, I I will be shocked. Mm-hmm. Like I mean, I really I would mean, be. Don't overthink it. Huh? I would be floored if this game is not the 7 o'clock CBS kickoff. It's the last one. Thanks for tuning in to our premium LSU content right here on YouTube. If you want more of it, subscribe below.